Hey, you guys, it's Voluptuously Skinny, and I'm here with day four of our Made to Crave um, devotion and getting rid of the regain, especially after bariatric surgery. But this is good for anyone who is trying to just deal with any cravings that they are having, especially concerning food. So let's go ahead and get started with our day four sample menu plan. I've added, I've tried to add some new things every single day, but there may be times where I repeat just because I've got to repeat. <laughs> we eat things over, but I was trying to give you something that was diverse enough to where you could modify it if you wanted to and give you some different ideas of what things that I'm eating. So the first thing on our day four sample menu, menu plan, of course, is a protein shake. Make sure that you're getting your liquid proteins in. The second thing is a snack. It's cottage cheese with cinnamon. It almost always puts me in the mind of rice pudding, that flavor, but I add a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of stevia to my cottage cheese and it is so delicious. And lunch, again, leftovers. Make it easy for yourself. Don't make it hard. Don't try to do something new every single day. Repeat those things that you have for dinner. If it's easy to access, is that the right word? If it's easy to get to, then you will be less likely to crave something bad or something that is not necessarily good for you at that particular time. So lunch is garden salad with ranch, grilled chicken, three ounces. Then snack, a tuna pouch. I keep tuna pouches everywhere. I keep them at work. I keep them in my car. I keep them everywhere. I keep protein bars in the bedside drawer beside my bed just in case I need a bite at the end of the night as a snack so dinner grilled shrimp cheese eggs and avocado I love cheese eggs and avocado and if you put that everything seasoning on top from Trader Joe's y'all mm, you taught myself something really good and then snack peanut butter peanut butter is always a good source for um, protein and it is a good source for getting in calories. The medication that I take in the evening time, I'm supposed to take about 300 calories or, or consume about 300 calories with that. And the easiest way to get to that 300 calories is through peanut butter or nuts. Those are my go-to things for that. All right, let's get started on our Bible study. All right, let's turn to Made to Crave. Let's go to this one here. We were on day four. And let's go to our devotional. So day four, are cravings chasing you? A well-known weight loss company recently ran a television ad about a little orange monster chasing a woman throughout her day, tempting her with foods that obviously weren't part of her healthy eating plan. This ad perfectly captures what it feels like to be harassed by cravings all day long. It's a scenario that has defined the greater part of my adult life. I believe God made us to crave. Now, before you think this is some sort of cruel joke by God, let me assure you that the object of our cravings was never supposed to be food, sex, money, or chasing after significance. Think of Eve's temptation in the Garden of Eden. While the object that enticed her might have been an apple, the core of her struggle was that she wanted to be like God, knowing good and evil. The very downfall of humanity was caused when the first woman surrendered to a craving to eat something she wasn't supposed to and to pursue a power that she was never intended to wield. But it didn't stop there. Look at how Jesus was tempted in Matthew 4. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to Jesus and said, If you are the Son of God, tell those stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Verses 2 through 4. It's a perfect verse that tells you who to crave. Satan tried to appeal to Jesus' physical craving for food. But here's the significant difference between Eve and Jesus. Eve was saturated in the object of her desire. Jesus was satur saturated in God's truth. Jesus had been in a desert fasting for 40 days. But he held strong and set a powerful example of how to escape the vicious grip of temptation. When we feel deprived and consumed and wanting unhealthy choices, we too can rely on the truth of God's word to help us. 
With each of Satan's temptations, Jesus quoted scripture without hesitation to refute that temptation. Truth is powerful. The more saturated we are with truth, the more powerful we'll be in resisting our temptations. And the more we'll naturally direct our cravings where they should be directed, to the author of all truth. As we read in Matthew 4, 8 through 10, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Are cravings a curse or a blessing? The answer to that depends on what we're craving and what we're craving will always depend on whatever we're consuming, either the object of our desire or God and his truth. Let's go on to the verse. Y'all, that was deep if you ask me. All right, so Matthew 4, let's look at uh, some of these verses that I have highlighted. It says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on the very word, on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we have to make sure that when we're thinking about those cravings, that we switch the script and that we think about are we looking at food as a craving is that going to satisfy us is that going to keep us at peace is that going to give us joy everlasting or just for the moment it's reading god's word seeking god craving god going to give us joy and peace everlasting absolutely jesus said to him let me let me go back Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms in the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Have y'all ever seen a box of donuts at work or anywhere and somebody's offering you this or offering you cake and you hear you say or you heard somebody say, get away from me, Satan. Usually it's because we've just started some kind of diet or something that we, something to lose weight, to get rid of weight. But we need to remember that. Yeah, get away from me, Satan. We need to treat Satan like he is a disease, like we are allergic to those type of things. We need to speak that out into the environment so that when those times come, that we're able to, well, we, we call it rehearsing. We need to rehearse these things so that when the time comes, we're able to say, get away from me, Satan, and we're able to resist those temptations. All right, y'all. So based on today's reading, what is one thing God is saying to you? As always, I will put my comment in the, um, I will put my answer in the comments. So I love y'all. Let's keep praying for a wonderful day. Let's keep praying that God will continue to help us to resist Satan and resist those temptations to crave food and not crave him. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace out, babies. Mwah.